Hello everyone. In this video, I would like to talk about the backoff controller UPS function of CX9000 series controller. As we introduced from one of uh, the previous video, that is a write persistent function block. The function block allows the controller to retain the variables. The variables has a persistent properties. However, to retain the variables, we need to trigger that write persistent function block. Sometimes if your system shut down the power by accident or by some unknown reason, you will still lost data, especially for some important parameters, for example, the PID parameters or some recipe values inside the controller. So we want the controller has a retain function, whatever you trigger or not, when the system shut down the power, we want to retain those variables. So that comes up one topic, that is the UPS of the backoff controller. From the screen, as we can see, that is a CX9020 controller. The CX9020 controller is widely used in the machine level control system. And that is a cost effective controller. By default, this controller doesn't come with uh, the UPS function. If you want the UPS function, when you buy this uh, controller, you need to order the controllers with a UPS function. So when you receive the controller, you will not see any additional modules besides this controller. This UPS module will be built in into this controller. From the outside, there's no difference with a normal controller. So keep in mind, when you order the controller, you'd better order the controller with a UPS function. That is one module built in into the controller. By default, the UPS will not be enabled. We must call this function block to enable the function, allows the system to archive to retain the variables. That variables need to be set with the persistent properties. So in this video, I will show how can we use this function block and how can we set the variable properties. From this Infosys backoff.com website, to find out the detailed information of how we can use this function block, you need to search under this tree. So the Twinkai 3 PLC under the PLC libraries for PC based system and find out the UPS function. Under this directory, you will find the CX5000 and there's a CX9020 controller. Regarding the CX5000 controller, as I know, all the controllers come with uh, the UPS function. But if you need this uh, UPS function, you do need a call one function block. So if we go to the CX5000, it named uh, IB underscore S underscore UPS. For the CX5100, that controller is a little bit different. It added underscore CX5100. If you use a controller that is a CX9020, so we need to purchase the U900, this module. Also, we need to program to call this function block. That is a IB underscore S UPS CX9020 U900. So the detailed information is here. Let me show how can we program that. This is a one Twinkers 3 project. And to find out where we can call that function block, we need to go to the reference under the PLC project, right click, add a library. That is a system library. Let's type in the name fb underscore s ups underscore cx 9020 underscore u 900. You need to wait a couple seconds to allow the system to search this function block. And it's searched, and we click the OK. It will be added in your system and in your project here. And after this, let's go to the GVL global variable list. Let's create a one variable list. Let's call that variable list GVL system. Let's create a one system, okay? And from here, we will name one instant function block and call that function block FBCX9020U900. Okay, and that function block here. Okay, let's build. Okay, no error here. So when we use this function block, we will use this instant function block here. 
And other than this, we need to create the variables, that variables with a persistent properties. We need to name var underscore global persistent here. We need to create this area. Let's name the one integer here. Integer persistent value test. Integer. If some variable value need to be retained while the system shut down, we need to declare this variable under this uh, global persistent, this area. Here, we can declare real integer or bool or array. For example, if we name one array, array data, so we can name ARR AY in this array it has a 100 of real so we can name one array data buffer to retain some important data there okay so let's go to the system and go to the main and from the main from here we can name one program and this program we can call that variable persistent okay so from the main we can call this program so from the main we can call this program and we will program the function block under this uh, variable persistent program so from here we can call that uh, function block so we can right click click this uh, input assistant and from here let's select this uh, instant calls keep in mind this instant calls so it will help us to build up all the input and output under this uh, function block so from this uh, variable list we can see gbl system that is uh, the function block we need to call and select that and click the OK. After we click, it will automatically create those input and output here. So if you right click, click this input assistant and go to the variable, go to the system, select this, click the OK direct from this variable list, you will see the difference. It won't automatically build up this input and output. You can manually input them, but it's really hard for yourself to input them, right? The best way is a right click. So use the instant calls. Keep in mind this. Okay, so how we can fill this input and output? So we need to look at the detail of this help. So the detailed information of those input and output are showing here. This night ID, usually we can leave as an empty because this night ID, that is an AMS ID. If you really want to find out the actual number here, you can go to the right corner, click this router, click the edit routers, find out the controller you are connecting, and uh, this is uh, the AMS night ID, that controller it has. You can copy the controller you are connecting and paste it here. Also, we can leave at uh, empty. The next input, that is a PLC port. PLC port, that is uh, important. Usually that is a 551. Where we can find out this value? Under this uh, PLC project here, so you will see the port number your controller will use. That is a 851 here. So under this uh, PLC project, go to this port. For the timeout, we can type in the value from this example, the timeout. We can type in this uh, default underscore ADS timeout. Okay, we can copy and paste it there. Paste here. And the E UPS mode. This is a very important parameter. From this E UPS mode, we can find here. So we can click this and look at the detail of this explanation. So we could have a four modes here. I used this. So UPS, write persistent data, no shutdown. 
okay i will paste this uh, mode here because those variables they are keywords so you'd better copy and paste rather than write by your own because once you lost the one characters here it won't work and this e persistent mode we need to use this so we can copy direct for this t recover time by default we can write a 10 seconds here so let's go to the program e persistent mode and this t recover time we will write t palm 10 seconds okay Uh, those parameters are key parameters we need to type in and here we can build this uh, project uh, this word that is one typical word however the system cannot identify this word that's because currently we haven't added one reference here so let's click add a library from this library we need to search tc2 underscore utilities select and once we add this uh, utility, and after this, let's compile, build the solution. And once we add this uh, TC2 underscore utilities, we will see this name will be identified. So if we right click, go to the definition, so you will see this uh, persistent mode this belongs to this uh, TC2 utilities. That's why usually someone, if this is the first time for him to use this uh, function block, uh, he will very confuse where I can find this name, how we can type in the mode type under this uh, input mode. So from this reference, we need to add this underscore as UPS. Also, we need to add this underscore utilities. And from here, we can type in a comment so u 900 as we can see to use this function block we do not need to trigger this function block we just need to from the main to call this function block and that's it and next step i will show a very simple video i archived when i used the one actual controller uh, i will use this i persistent variable test to type in a data and uh, i will cycle power that controller so you will see the value 45 value stay in this uh, persistent value test this tag it will retain okay let me demonstrate this process okay this is that function block and this is that tag i persistent value test that is a one integer value let's use the watch table to check out the online value for this integer value currently the value for this uh, variable that is a 30 uh, i type in the 45 write the value into this variable now it's a 45 and now let's go offline and shut down the power and from the bottom we can see currently the software is disconnected with the controller. After one minute, I power up this controller and reconnect this controller. So after the communication recovered, we can see the value of this uh, variable is still the 45. So this variable is uh, retained. All right, let's do a quick wrap up. In this video, we showed how we can use the, the function block CX9020 U900 function block used in CX9020 controller. This function block will enable the UPS function that is a hardware built in into this controller to retain the variables. Okay, that is for today. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumb up. If you like to watch more videos in my channel, please subscribe and hit the bell. Thank you for watching.